Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World. History was made tonight at the Majestic Theatre, where Broadway's longest-running show, The Phantom of the Opera, became the first show to mark its 25th anniversary ever. And I'm here at the show's after-party at the New York Public Library, where I caught up with the cast. But let's start things off at the historic finale at the Majestic. Tell me what tonight meant to you being a part of this 25th anniversary performance. It, I mean, to be asked to be part of this meant the world to me because it was Hal. Hal made all these decisions. Hal said, this is the team that I want to assemble for this 25th anniversary. So the fact that he looked over here and said, this is who I want is, is everything. You know, this show has come to mean a lot to me on a, on a personal level. So I really wanted to be here to celebrate 25 years. So it's the best. Give me your history with the show. Uh, I started on the national tour. I learned every role that I could because I wanted to eat it up. And I spent a couple years going back and forth between the Broadway company and the national tour, which was kind of an unbelievable thing. No, not many shows give you that kind of opportunity. And then here I am playing Ralph. It's, it's great. Well, let's talk about the role. What do you love about him? I think the best is that I get to have that experience of falling in love eight times a week. It's that experience that you look for in life that you don't always get to have. I have it eight shows a week. I think there's something about that that I look forward to every night. And working with this 25th anniversary company? Sierra Vargas. I mean, she's raised our game to such an amazing level. You can't help but meet her where she is. She's amazing. She's unbelievable. It seems to me she's built to do this role. So I'm loving getting the chance to explore that with her every night. And Hugh Panero. <laughs> He has taught me so much. He was, you know, he played Raoul originally. He's gone on to play the Phantom. I, I look to him in all things professional and personal. He teaches me a lot, like every day. So what was tonight like for the two of you? Well, it, I think it was different, a little different for both of us. For myself, it was almost as if I was time traveling. The, the show looked perfect, and it was just a little jewel box, and it was just as I remembered it. It was amazing. It was really amazing. And to think that I was part of it was, it was just o overcame me, really. Because you were in the original company. I was in the original company, and I looked at the ballerinas, and I said, they look really good. <laughs> and, I said, and then I said, did we look that good? Yes, I guess so. I don't know. You still look that good. Thank do, you. Do you remember opening night in New York, what that was like with the original company? Yes. Yeah, yes. I remember um, there were, we have long staircases backstage and there were gifts on every single step. There were so many gifts backstage. I never, you could hardly get up the staircases. And it, it was it was really quite phenomenal, and you know uh, a lot of shows open and people have trepidation that the critics aren't going to like it, people aren't going to like it. But we were standing backstage. It was this is a party. We just knew everybody was going to like it, but we didn't know that it was going to last this long. We just didn't. You know. How could anyone? How could it's anyone? so it's so far beyond the pale. I mean, we think about when when we first got into town, the, the long running shows. I mean, you know, Greece and Calcutta. It's like the show ran eight or ten years. It was mind blowing. But now we come in. It's like, and we'd like the original company to sit over here, and the rest of us are all like, ooh. It's like a vampire coven. It's like, oh, the elders. Oh, oh, don't talk to them. It's like, oh, they're still alive. Amazing. It's really incredible. And and the thing is also incredible is that this show has. It's not just that it's run a long time, but it has this currency. It has this emotional currency, and you can feel the audience still really wanting the story to happen and still wanting to tell the story. And for me, it's like graduation day because, you know, I'm sitting there and I've got Hugh Panara who was my last Raoul. I've got um, 
Ramin, who's up there singing, who said to me, oh, you know, I started my career because I saw you do Saigon in Toronto. And I'm like, I'm somewhere between the Walker and the Hall of Fame. It's like, it's a great moment. These incredible young people, you know, and you think, well, I didn't, it was really worth it. You know, it was worth it to do that with your life, to see that it does get passed on. And then, of course, you got Hal and Cameron up there, and you just go, wow. You know, you just, it just, I mean, I, once I see Hal, it's over. You were one of my all-time favorite phantoms. Oh, no. Take me back to what that, that meant to you. I mean, getting that role. And do you remember your first performance on stage? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, was, I remember being in the Angel before he does the, the reveal and thinking, oh, my God, I'm playing the Phantom of the Opera on Broadway. It was really, it's an amazing thought. Uh, the, the journey of it was, is interesting because the, the show I had immediately before that uh, I w was my first Broadway show and I was fired. And I thought my career was over, and I got a call saying, would you come and audition for Phantom? And I said, no, I can't take it, because they're gonna break my heart, and I'm gonna you know, put a gun in my mouth. And I was I couldn't do it, you know? And my agent talked me into it, and I went and I got it. And that was what changed my life. And that's where I met her, and that was the end of it. We, yeah, I saw him, and I said, this is the new Raoul. <laughs> he, he became was the Raoul before. Yeah, I give it. But our first Raoul was Steve Martin, and he was very European, blonde hair, blue eyed, and I looked at him and go, He's a row? <laughs> it's a very famous response on her part. <laughs> you know, I've been asking all the gentlemen that have played Phantom, what is the most challenging aspect of playing him during a performance and what's the easiest aspect during the performance? Well, that's a good that's a good question, a really good question. I think the most challenging thing is always music of the night because it has to be perfect. There's just no place to hide vocally. The little pianissimo sections have to be, I mean, Hugh, we saw Hugh before the show and he was like, oh, I hope I have, you know, the, the too sore, I hope I have that moment. It's like, you will, you will, you will, but I remember thinking that. Just every now and then checking in and going, oh, I don't have my fastball tonight. Floating, falling, sweet intoxication. Touch me, trust me, savor each sensation. Let the dream begin, let your Darker side give in to the power of the music that I write. The power of the music of the Both of you have quite a history. Howard, how many performances of The Phantom have you done? 2,540 something. I'm so tired hearing that. I'm exhausted <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. saying the number. You think you know. I'm tired. Yeah. So would you, re would you reflect on what that was like doing this that many times and just being a part of this show and what it means to you? I, I feel really lucky to be a part of the history of the show. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously eclipsed all kinds of records and, and uh, just to be a part of it and, and to have, have uh, put in the time that I did there was a blessing, really a great, great show to be a part of. I know. Yeah? Yeah, I wish I had done the show with Howard. I was in the original I company uh, and was I here know. for we about three years. Yeah. We just missed each other. Yeah. yeah, it was great though. So give me your history with Fanta. Well, I was, I was in the original company as, as the understudy to Sarah Brightman and uh, I was in the ensemble. And then I, about nine months later, I moved up to the alternate Christine, and then about a year into the run, I moved up to the, the main Christine. So it was, it was great, and I was there for about two years after that. So, so. what was it like being part of that original company? Because I saw the show the week after it opened in New York, and there was nothing like the phenomenon. I think, I think you had to wait like two years to get a ticket to Phantom back then. Yes, it was insane. And I mean, you know, cabs would stop and ask you for tickets. And, you know, and my, my, <laughs> I, t I tell this joke that my therapist at the time asked me for tickets, even though I told him that I was going crazy getting tickets for people. <laughs> and anyway, it was just, it was just, a, it, but it was lovely to be a part of this huge, you know, huge phenomenon. And, and I was very proud to be in it. And it's still, yeah. the, the amazing still, thing is that it's still such a phenomenon. The people who are coming to see it for the very first time, and then, you know, of course, there are the fans who have come back tens and twenties and hundreds yeah, of yeah. times, you know. Uh, it's Crazy. just, uh, it's, it's amazing. Do you remember your first night on stage as Christine? What do you remember of that night? I do. I went on with Michael Crawford. He was just about to leave the show, so it was, it was pretty exciting. Yeah. And I wore Sarah Brightman's costumes, which are about six inches too short for me, but you know, whatever, I had a great time. <laughs> Danced on point in public for really the first time in my life. And uh, I was 
ecstatic. I just had, it changed my life. Why do you think audiences have grasped this show? Why do you think they've all fallen in love with this for 25 years? Oh, wow, it, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a great love story, even though it's couched in a, you know, with this, this, this figure of the Phantom who's this, you know, pathetic yet frightening character, I, but it's all about love I, also. I, absolutely, right, it's, it's, but it's also, I think, that the character of the Phantom, everyone in the audience can identify with. We we all you know wanting have, to be loved and wanting to be loved and the kind of and and the and his yearning for some kind of expression of that and in, and never really being able to do it unless it's on his terms you know he's he's a troubled guy but we all we all understand the pain that's kind of you know driving him underneath and and uh, yeah. it, it's uh, and they identify with the beautiful. Christine and the beautiful exactly. dancers in the grand opera the and spectacle this of the is show. A great it's a story. gorgeous show. Yeah. And the music is so beautiful. The melodies are soaring and it's just there I yeah. mean, Peter. I guess if yeah. if you could you know, if there was a formula <laughs> for a musical, this would be it because it just has everything. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Welcome back to New York. What was tonight like for you? Uh, you know, I, I'm I was here as a fan and I I'm seeing a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of history on that stage tonight, you know? And this New York company is a lot of fun. They're a lot of nice, woke, welcoming. I just felt proud and privileged to be part of it, you know? I was really grateful, really grateful. Well, let's talk about the end of the show. What kind of rehearsal did you have? What was that all like? You can rehearse this or you're blue in the teeth, and then what happens is completely different. And uh, it was great seeing Hugh at the end, you know? Because, you know, the guys had the pressure of all week. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, you don't sing now, Hugh? It was just so much fun though. And I loved it because I was here to celebrate. I didn't have the pressure anymore, you know? So what was it like for you tonight, sitting in the house, watching this 25th anniversary performance? It was nice to actually watch the show again. Sadly, I was only able to watch Act One because we had to go prepare. But it was nice. I haven't seen the show in years, obviously, you know, since doing it. And um, it was just great. Like, I love, because my time with the Phantom is over, so I can sit there and watch it as a fan now, and there's nothing going through my mind other than just enjoying these performances, and Hugh's interpretation is so unique, and his own, and I love that, you know? I love some of, a lot of his choices, to be honest. And seeing Sierra tonight. I was so proud, you know, because I've worked with her for so, so long, but I was looking forward to being on this side of the stage and watching the, the genius that is Sierra. So what is the most challenging aspect of the Phantom character and what is the easiest aspect of the Phantom character when you're playing him on stage? Uh, the easiest aspect is enjoying it, but it's the most deceivingly hard part I've, out there. Everyone thinks he's not on stage that much and it's, technically he's not, but there's a reason. It, it is such a difficult part and what surprised me was how physically it killed my body. Like. I prolapsed my disc in my neck because of the part. To this day, I still got problems, but it was worth it. Congratulations. Tell me what tonight meant to you. Tonight was really the culmination of a, a childhood dream, honestly. I, I loved, I've loved this show since I played Raoul many years ago. And, uh, and then, you know, so I show up for rehearsal today, and one of the first people I see is Kathy Buffalo, who was a Christine when I played Raoul. 
and Kevin Gray, who was the Phantom when I played Ralph. So this was about a celebration of family, a celebration of Hal Prince. Uh, there is no one like him. And, you know, I really kind of felt like I was doing the show for him tonight. Uh, he's given me so many opportunities with this show, with Showboat. He, there's just no one like him. He's, he's, a, he's a, a living legend. And uh, to, to do this show tonight for all of our, our family and friends and alumni, it was so magical. Sandra Joseph, one of my favorite Christines, was in the front row. Every time I looked at her, I started to cry, so I had to stop looking at her. Um, but that's what it meant. It was about a celebration of family and an iconic show that, as, you, as you've heard, has brought in more revenue to New York City than any other show in, in New York history. We are, we are part of something that is theater history uh, and American history. I have to give kudos to my leading lady because every time I got a little bit nervous, I would just focus on Sierra. And we would just make eye contact, look at each other's eyes, and anchor each other. And um, once I, I think once I got through the first layer, everything fell into place because that's the most exposed you are. If, if you know, music of the night, you either get through that or you don't. And uh, thank God it, it went really well. And you know, there was a lot of pressure because we had all these alumni and I had three amazing other phantoms that were coming into the finale. I was like, all right, I got to turn it out for these, my, my brothers. Yeah. And you did. What I, was, I never asked this before, what is the most challenging aspect of playing the Phantom and what's the easiest aspect of playing the Phantom during a performance? For me, I, we're all different. For me, the most challenging part is uh, the first layer when he's supposed to be the most in control, very suave, and uh, just completely in control of the situation as much as he can be. And uh, I, the easiest part for me is the final there when he's exposed because I find that the, the vulnerable, damaged phantom is much closer to me than the, the guy that's always, you know, in control. And the, the, uh, yeah, I, I identified with the, the wounded phantom as opposed to the sex, sexy, in control guy. You were superb tonight. Thank you so much. I had the best night. It was incredible. It was amazing. So what was the whole day like for you preparing for this 25th anniversary? I had a live interview this morning on CBS, So, and I had another one, a live interview yesterday. So this week has been interview central, but I'm happy to do press for a show like Phantom of the Opera. So that was this morning, then I took like a little bit of a rest, then I came and we had to rehearse the whole finale and everything starting at 2.30. So we had a couple hours of rehearsal and Cameron was there and um, we, we put, had people standing in for Sarah and Hal and it was just amazing. So I've been at the theater since 2.30. <laughs> and then to do a show. Yeah, then do a show. I, I kept saying I can't wait to get to the show part because that I can do, you know? I, I just wanted to get into the character and get into the music and everything. And I knew that once I took my bow, I could just, even though I, had, I sang a little extra at the end, I just, I knew I could relax and just enjoy. And it was amazing. Can you tell me what it's been like returning? Because when did you join the show again? This is the completion of my first week. I joined the show on Monday. So this is one way to join a company. <laughs> Um, I was only in London two weeks ago, so it's just, it's crazy, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the role, what you love about her. 
What don't I love about her? I just think it's really a coming of age story for her. You know, by the time that I get to Managers 2, which is twisted every way and everything, that's when she really sort of realizes she's on her own and that it's not going to be a phantom and it's not going to be a Ral that's going to get her through this life. Oh! Oh, there's a phantom right there! Um, he's so great. Um, so, you know, it's and then when wishing happens, this is her anthem to her father. And, you know, I just, I invoke as many spirits as I can who've come before me. And, you know, my grandparents were with me on that stage tonight. I felt them, they're both in heaven. And I just, you know, I sang it for, you know, everything that <laughs> means something to me, so. What the show means to me, this show is a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah. 26 and a half years in London, 25 years here. Why do you think it's so successful? I always start with the score. I think the score is fantastic. It's one of the best things that Andrew has ever written. Um, and then it's, you know, added with all this height, the love story and the, the, you know, the sets and the costume and the direction that Hal Prince also, I mean, his, his direction is genius. And like he said tonight, this is the same show. We have preserved this show for 25 years and it's how it should be done. In my opinion, it's the, the way to do it. So I just, yeah. Talk about your leading man, your phantom. My Hugh Pernero. We've been dying to do this together since forever. I mean, honestly, he and I have known about each other for a long time and have had met a while ago and done a few things together, but never this. And I had heard how spectacular his phantom is. When I joined the company in Vegas, they were all telling me this guy, you know, he's incredible. And so we, you know, he, he sent me flowers on my opening night, well, gave them to me, and the card said, finally. And I was just like, <laughs> It was an amazing finale to tonight. Talk about all the phantoms you got to perform with. Yeah, I know. I love all of those men individually. They are incredible. It was great, of course, reuniting with Ramin. I mean, he's he's my love never dies guy. Like, he's that, he's that phantom for me, and we've created so much together. So it was an honor. And Peter is lovely, and I'm so excited for New York to get to see his phantom. And, of course, John Owen Jones. I mean, what a voice he has. So it's, it's just... It was such a pleasure to sing with him and have my hue as well. What was the best part of the evening for you so far? Oh, God, I don't think I could. I, I, the whole thing, really, I think when it started, when everything started, it just felt like heaven. I could hear, you know, the audience. That's probably my favorite is the energy from the audience and just the appreciation and love and, yeah.